Hello everyone, uh, so today I'm showing you basically the build um, of the Viva laser engraver um, which I bought off eBay um, and Viva is basically a Chinese company which has a few um, warehouses in Europe and the US which means you can get stuff actually pretty quickly. Um, so as you can see here, um, getting the frame out uh, and here you can see the manual. The frame is made out of 20 by 20 uh, profiles, aluminium profiles, uh, and then the carriage is all made using those acrylic parts which have been laser cut. Um, so the assembly starts with the laser head. Um, and so basically you're just screwing this one on, on this one and assembling it with the motor on the other end with the pulleys and so on. So that laser cutter was, uh, laser engraver, um, was about 100 quid um, on eBay. Um, and so you can find it from most places uh, and it comes with a laser engraver. Uh, here you can see how wonderful I was with the Allen key trying to get from one side and being like, oh, it's not long enough, whereas I just had to basically rotate the, the pulley and that will have been fine. Um, so here on the assembly, basically you're mounting the pulley onto the motor and then you've got three screws um, you put the spaces in between which are nylon spaces then you've got the um, the wheels So here is basically the first sub-assembly uh, and also my first mistake. Um, so all along, basically, I was trying to be very good in terms of like following the steps and so on, basically checking if it was kind of like what I would say, just what everyone would think when they buy something Chinese, like, oh, is it Chinese shit and, and doesn't work and so on. Um, so I was trying to follow very much the steps and so on and so forth. And here I'm getting to the first problem, which is basically that the screws are hitting the um, profile when I'm trying to get to slide it on um, and basically my solution for this was to basically disassemble that and use some change the, the screws for some low profile screws uh, button head instead of the ones which are supplied with um, but then later on you'll see that it's actually not required um, that mistake was mine shocking right um, so yeah uh, re reassembling everything and then testing it out and it worked fine um, so that's the solution, but it's not the reason why it didn't work. Um, so anyway, that's the first module, which is going to be the one kind of going across um, across the area of engraving. Um, so here you can see me happy, busy. Uh, uh, and and after that, you've you've got to feed the um, the belt the belt through and then you attach it at the end which means that basically once you enclose the the belt uh, when the motor the stepper motor will rotate it will then allow it to to go side to side um, from one side to the other um, cause the travel um, one thing to know though is that there is no uh, and here you can see me testing it out there is no um, end stop so there is no sensor to detect that it's gonna collide against something which means that if if you're trying to engrave something very big, it could actually hit the edges if you don't put it in the correct spot. Uh, anyway, so now you can see me um, starting to build the other two carriages, which are going to be basically, I think they call it the Y axis. There, just again, same thing. You put the, the motor, you put a pulley on, and then you've got as well your three um, wheels, which are going to go and grab onto the tube. And that's where I'm realizing what I, I did wrong on the first shot. So I, here I use basically only spaces all around where I should have used two parts which are nuts. Uh, and that makes everything so much easier because then the the, the carriage can be its own part. Um, and, and as you can see here, basically it's standing there because the wheels are, are there. And therefore, if you wanted to use it for another function than, um, than laser engraving, then you can actually change that, that plate at the end and, and mount anything you want. Um, so that's a pretty cool, sweet function actually. Um, so yeah, it was my fuck up.
I know, shocking, right? Um, anyway, going back onto the build, trying to hopefully finish up the second axis. Um, and here you can see I've done the same one. And second mistake, because here in the manual again, it says properly that they should be mirrored and not not the same ones, uh, not identical. So yeah, fast forward the messing up and making it right. Um, then you've got to mount some brackets, basically. Those brackets are all attached to, well, they are the way to attach basically the first axis to the second axis. And here for a while I checked if if there was anything that said on ma in the manual to cut the ends of it or not. There was nothing saying it, um, but there was nothing saying that you should keep it. But the parts are actually, the parts that are attached to it are actually made on purpose so that they have a, a slot for you to fit the the remaining length of the belt if you want to keep it. Um, but anyway, I did it on purpose because, you know, it's so much nicer without an extra belt and whatever bullshit you can come up with to justify when you should the bed. Okay, now still trying to basically do it as good as possible. Uh, so we are on mistake number two. Here is mistake number three, but that's my notes. I'm just putting the nuts in the wrong spot, pretty much. Um, big deal, right? Um, so again, here just making the whole frame made out of 20 by 20 and sliding this one up. Little balancing effort, uh, not too bad. Um, and here you can see basically, yeah, my mistake was that those nuts are not meant to be on the top, but they're meant to be on the outside because that's where the, the uh, feet are gonna come and screw themselves on. And here I'm getting the four feet, which are just made out of acrylic. And again, they have the same feature in terms of having a, a slot for the um, uh, for the bell to go in. And then here I'm trying to my best magic to see if uh, by just throwing them on, they stick. And oh, first one that does it. And second one, oh, how wonderful is that? Third one, are we, are we gonna be third times the charm? Oof, 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 oof. And the last one, I had no more magic left, so I just went the traditional way. Screwing it in. Yeah, when you forget something when you're recording. Um, so that's most of it for the mechanical build. Um, then there's a little bit of electronics, obviously. Um, and that's where there is my last mistake. But this one is. Uh, uh, uh. This one is actually from the manual. Um, there is nothing in the manual that tells you to put those nuts in. Um, I reckon it's probably because they sell two different kits, one with the laser head and one without. Um, but it still is a problem there. Um, so yeah, that was the frustration of having my third or fourth mistake. Last count. Um, so, yeah, there's that bit missing um, on whatever it was, Kelly Ray Jepsen or, or Taylor Swift, whatever. Anyway, let's keep on going. Uh, so, yeah, just finishing up, taking off the, the last bit so that I can actually put the nuts to mount the control board on there. Um, problem with the control board, not much, um, except that the wiring is a bit messy um there is nothing to make it very tidy so yeah uh here you can see me struggling five six seven times i thought it was the classical usb problem where you try to insert it one way the other way it doesn't work um but actually it was just completely different it, one side was three pin the other side was five pin and i was just a dummy so what can you do um so yeah the the only thing is a bit it's a bit messy um and as I said, there is no sensor to to know when you are at the end of the travel. So you got to troubleshoot and check that for yourself, basically. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much that for, for the build itself. Um, took about two hours and a half. Pretty straightforward and pretty good value, really, to be fair. And it comes with a few extra and glasses and so on and so forth. So 
So here's a little trip around. And then let's do some testing. So for testing, they, it comes with its own software. Um, don't use that, it's crap. Um, pretty much. Like, I tried to use it for half an hour, an hour, and then I was like, okay, I can't do anything with that. Um, so I went and used Lightburn. Um, open source, you can just get it, and that's very fine. Um, and yeah, it worked pretty much straight away. So here you can see me doing a test of uh, engraving the logo of the company I work for, Recycli. Um, with the smoke as well, I find that pretty cool. Uh, it's a pretty nice and aired out spot, so it's fine. Um, but yeah, it was a pretty straightforward build. Uh, I tried to do it again, um, to print the same thing again, uh, the same image. And it didn't work so well. Um, so as in you could see that there were two passes, uh, like everything was getting a bit more blurry. So yeah, I would recommend just doing it as a one pass, like the repeatability is not out of this word. So yeah, I mean, it's a hundred quid. You're not going to get a, a laser engraver that is amazing for that price. This was my first build and my first video. And if you've got any questions about what I found about that, um, that product, Drop me a, a message in the comment. I'll, I'll see it and I'll reply to it as soon as I can. Um, otherwise, I'll be doing some more videos, not like this exactly. Um, not going to be doing reviews of products or whatever. Uh, not going to be that kind of guy, um, but more building some bits. Um, I've got one for a laser cutter coming up, a uh, six axis coming up as well, um, and quite a few more things. I basically just want to have the excuse of using that YouTube channel to build cool shit. So yeah, that's gonna be me. So if you want a bit of, see a bit of that, feel free to subscribe, um, like the video, share it. No, I'm so joking, don't share it too much. That's my first video. All right, thank you for watching, see ya.